Hello and welcome. Today on BOI Weekly, Bank of Industry and other stakeholders support fourth edition of Fashion Souk, firmly established as the go-to industry fair, providing a platform for emerging entrepreneurs and industry icons to connect with their target market, to network and tap into opportunities to scale up their businesses. Now organized by Eventful Nigeria, the fair features thousands of players in the entire fashion value chain, from manufacturers to distributors and retailers. The impact of the fair on the local fashion industry has remained phenomenal, and that's why the Bank of Industry has continued to scale up its support. Details in a moment. I am Ayotunde Balu. <laughs> For the second time in 2019, Fashion Cirque is happening here at the Harbour Point in Victoria Island, Lagos. Organised by Eventful Nigeria Limited, an indigenous event planning business, the Fashion Cirque is a niche for everything fashion, offering an array of vendors selling indigenous clothes, shoes, bags, hats, jewellery, local fabrics and accessories for all classes of people, men, women and children, young and old. All these made by creative Nigerian designers and other players in the fashion value chain. The objective of the show is further expansiated by the convener, Mrs. Yewande Zakias. The most important objective of the Fashion Souk is to give fashion entrepreneurs in Nigeria, both emerging and established ones, a platform to come and just showcase their goods, to showcase their creativity, their talents, and to just give Nigerians as well a one-shop stop where they can come and see 170 creative Nigerians doing amazing things and do all their shopping in one place. We have 170 and we had 700, over 700 applications, but you know we've got two hordes, there's only a finite number we can have, so we had to disappoint over 500 people. But what we do is we curate very carefully. When they apply, we go to your Instagram page, we see what you do. The first thing we look at, we, whilst it's not only made in Nigeria, the emphasis is on made in Nigeria. So I would say 90% of the brands here make everything locally. And that's what we're about. We want to show that in Nigeria, we can do amazing things. If our people are just given the opportunity, the chance to show themselves, we're world class. And I'm so proud of that. Fashion enthusiasts and entrepreneurs alike go through well over 170 stall vendors to make choices of designs that meet their taste. I would say it's a fantastic initiative and I like the fact that we came here today. My husband was reluctant to come but he found something for himself and especially in a shop that sells ladies things. Sometimes the men have forgotten so I'm happy he came today with us. But the things are really nice, fitting very well and um, we're very, very impressed. I'm very impressed. with Affordable as well, yes. The hair is very affordable. We've been around and it's also amazing at the things we find made in Nigeria as well, which is, which is great as well. I think what is excellent is it's promoting made in Nigeria. Um, I did not intend to spend. I didn't come here to spend. But I've spent quite a lot today and I like the quality of the products I've seen and the customer service. Now normally I'd buy my things overseas but for me to get enticed to spend here shows that many others will do the same and to push and to promote the Made in Nigeria brand. I have a, a beautiful pair of shoes in red um, I'm wearing the black of it from La, La Mariposa and this dress is also from La Mariposa. So I'm here to um, get more things and enjoy myself and wear a national brand and promote Nigerian fashion. Is the first time you are coming to this uh, fair? I've been here before, um, two years ago. So, yeah. Any improvement? Uh, yeah, there are more shops. Um, it's more, I think there are two tents that are being used now. So I think there are more, there's more choice, yes. Besides being a fair, a souk is also a sort of carnival where designers display their unique wares on the runway.
Because consumers have now become more discerning, succeeding in the fashion industry requires a significant measure of creativity and innovation, and players in that industry must combine impeccable and authentic designing with utility and enterprise. And that's what Clatural offers. Clatural is uh, a brand and uh, is a luxurious uh, brand. Uh, we are into statement pieces of uh, Afrocentric wear. And the mesh, as I have on, is our signature uh, design. So it runs through everything that we make at our place um, in terms of apparel. You know, so we have the cultural accents where we have colorful, unique, you know, accent for indoor and outdoor use. And then even our bags and necklaces are made from recycled, you know, fabrics and leather that we have at our uh, production center. So when you come to cultural, you have stuff for women, men and children. Uh, but at the soap today, we are displaying women wear. As you can see, you know, the pieces sell themselves. They are for the bold, authentic, you know, luxurious statement pieces. I mean, you wear them and then you catch the crowd. You must be bold <laughs> to wear them. You know, we have them in different pieces, accessories, trousers, you know, the boo-boos or the parapara like I have on and, and, and you know, in other forms. Uh, affordable, but, you know, people are just attracted by the amount of work that goes into even making just one piece the time and then the finishing. People are amazed that we can sit and cut fabric into tiny pieces and sew them and create a mesh. But actually that's our desire and that's our signature design. We are very mindful of the fact that the fashion industry is the second highest pollution causer in the world. And so we have a sustainability model where at Clatural we don't call anything waste. When we sew what we have as pieces we convert them into something useful. It's actually a Cameroon, a Cameroon um, business. The owner of the business is from Cameroon, from Kumba, to, to be precise. So she she makes big clothes for for the confident woman. Anyways, you know, so many ladies these days they tend to wear big clothes with the they tend to wear tight jeans with the young generation. So we just came up with this to just make them feel free. We got all home made bags, all made here in Nigeria. We deal strictly on skin. We have the croc, we have the snake skin, and our bags are always uniquely made. You see some of the bags, the skins are dyed, some are unpainted. We take our time to look into details. Like you see this one here, it's a beaded bag. All these are all handmade, all here in Nigeria. Some of our skin we have to import because of the level of processing it has to go through, which we can do here in Nigeria. But other than that, all the jobs are done here, the bags are done here. We have slippers as well. We have work bags, we have dressy bags, we have dinner bags, we have purses, whichever one you want. Like fashion from other regions of the world that have enjoyed global acceptance, African designs must reflect a fluid combination of native art, culture, history and other intrinsic elements to keep them unique without compromising quality. Adire, an indigo dye textile made in southwestern Nigeria, still attracts fashion enthusiasts here. We are from uh, the source, Oshobo, which is a world heritage site, the United Nations World Heritage Site. And you know, it's part of the things that Africans, we know we need to go back to the roots. Like uh, Dr. Kwame Kuruma said, he said, we Africans, we have made our contribution to the fund of human knowledge by extending the frontiers of arts, culture, and spiritual values. So that is why you will see that a lot of people are gravitating towards the magnetism of the beauty, you know, various kind of things and uh, patterns we have in our fabrics. That's why you see a lot of people are gravitating towards it. These are organically made, you understand, and they are kind of uh, customized. So if you, if you have one pattern, for instance now, it's going to be different from the one the other person is buying. You know, and the uh, variety is the spice of life. Do you get it now? So, and we have it on uh, brocade, on silk, 100% on chiffon. So, you know, all these things, uh, we have uh, foreigners patronizing it, Nigerians alike. So it's something that really depicts our culture in the best form you could ever imagine. And is it affordable? Yes, it's quite avo affordable. You know, when you look at it, it's even very cheap compared to what you would have uh, manufactured out there. Finished products from beads are also a sight to behold. More so, they can be used for contemporary fashion. 
Despite being a hobby, Beats Making for Hassad Ibrahim has been wonderful because it turns creativity into profit. There's a bag for everyone, like this one's at 10,000 Naira, so everybody can buy a bag of 10,000 Naira. Um, then the bigger ones are quite pricey because they take more time to make, two weeks, two weeks, sometimes two weeks, two days to make one. That's why the price is high. Are people really going for this? Yes, um, people who love beats buy them. Uh, people who are constantly on the internet should know now that big beaded bags are trending, so they do want to buy. How do you get funding for this kind of business? Um, I work. Without gainsaying, all these core elements are lavishly at play here. From the manufacturers, designers, to the models, beauticians and makeup specialists. Each edition of the fashion souk comes with improvement to make it worthwhile for both vendors and guests. It is a very, very beautiful event. Like so many people come together to get beautiful things, to sell new things. It is, it is wonderful. I, I was actually looking forward to, to be here and by the grace of God I am here. This is actually my first time and I'm really liking it. I really love everything. It's spacious. People tend to see everything. It's just beautiful. I believe a platform like this is very good for us in Nigeria. You know, when you talk about Afri capitalism and all these kind of things, you know, we need more of this. You understand that we also kind of uh, encourage our government and uh, those other stakeholders to encourage and, you know, like pump money into the system and let us have more things like this. When we started, it was still a new idea. So we started small, but it was so well received by the second time, if I was so well received, it was meant to be once a year, and then we had to have it twice a year. So each time we just you know, make it more interesting for people. We have the runway shows, we have the business pitches for the young entrepreneurs. And then this year, what we did that was different, we had what we call the Souk Boulevard, where we had 20 premium brands, you know, sort of showcase themselves in a bigger and better way. And each time everybody comes to say, you know what, Yuande, this is even better than the last time, because we listen to feedback and we try and make sure that we just make it more interesting. We have a very big food court, so once you finish your shopping, you can go and rest, have your food. We have a crash for so you don't want your children to disturb you, you can leave them there. So we just make it a fantastic family outing, and I think it's working for both the vendors and the, uh, and the guests alike. Welcome back. Now, we've been looking at the highlights of the second installment of the biannual fashion suit in 2019. Let's go back for more. The current value of the global fashion industry stands at $3 trillion, accounting for 2% of the world's gross domestic product. Of this amount, women's wear rakes in $621 billion, while men's wear takes up $402 billion. Africa fashion is not passive in the mix. The quality and uniqueness of the continent's designers and brands have caught the attention of the world, attracting some appreciable revenue. Sub-Saharan Africa's apparel and footwear market is reportedly worth $31 billion and that's according to a 2019 data by Euromonitor. The report shows that Nigeria's fashion industry is estimated to have a market worth of $4.7 billion. Bank of Industry cannot ignore these facts and figures, and that's why it supports the fashion souk. The bank's representatives at the fair showcase their service and offer advice to fashion entrepreneurs on how they can access the one billionaire fashion fund. Aside from finding the whole setup quite impressive, participants are not oblivious of the Bank of Industry's support. I must confess, I'm a bit biased because personally, in my own business, Bank of Industry has been very supportive uh, in giving us, you know, uh, a platform both to exhibit in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. So, and I see this being um, replicated with so many other brands that I know of. So I think Bank of D Industry is really doing a good job in bringing um, Nigerian indigenous brands to the fore and helping them to scale up on their businesses to be able to meet their objectives. At a separate setting, the woman at the center of it all, the Chief Executive Officer of Eventful Nigeria Limited, Yoande Zakias, sheds more light on the importance of creating the fashion souk. It was meant to be an annual event, just like fashion 
and uh, beauty were, I mean like food and beauty were, but you know the response was phenomenal. I mean we just couldn't even believe it. People loved that very first outing and I think it's because a lot of people don't have a platform. A lot of the entrepreneurs don't really have a platform where they can showcase their goods. Many of them are online. Many of them are maybe in remote locations. They're not on the, you know, in the key areas, the key shopping areas. So for, for the vendors it was just an amazing opportunity to come into one space and then of course for the guests it was like having a high street of fashion everything fashion under one roof mm -hmm. the response was phenomenal so instead of it being an annual event people pressured us both the guests and the vendors kept calling us that you have to do one before Christmas and that's how we now had fashion soup number two in uh, December uh, last year it tells me that there's still a great there's a great demand for what the people in the fashion industry are doing because you know we're looking at the entire fashion value chain so we had manufacturers retailers we had people in all the different type in all the different categories so clearly there's a great demand so it shows me, first of all, that there's a huge market. And secondly, that there's just not enough avenues for people to really showcase their talents and their creativity right now in the country. Mrs. Zakius also offers suggestions for how the government can phenomenally expand the industry. I think maybe we need to have hubs. I think maybe if the government can create like fashion hubs in different states where every state or every major city has like a, a, a mini, um, I think a hub is what I can call it, where people from the people who are doing pattern cutting, the people who are doing the sewing, the people who are retailing can all be there so that anybody that wants anything to do with fashion, especially in the made in Nigeria space, knows that this is where I go for that. So that it's not just limited to these uh, almost epileptic uh, shows that are put on by various organizations or other entrepreneurs or other individuals. Bank and industry, first of all, you have a fashion fund. So we're looking to you to really assist us in uh, particularly those who win the business pitches to help them with the uh, funding for their business. Then training, of course, as I've said, training is so critical. A lot of them need the training. So for us, I think that that's where you can really be uh, of support. You have already been a support, but we, we want to scale it up. We want to know that so that the people, in fact, some of them still came and said, oh, I need 1.5 million. We don't have 1.5 million to give right now. But we're hoping that as Bank of Industry sees the sustainability of what we're doing, they'll be able to increase the amount they give to us so we're able to empower people more. But you'll be amazed, 250,000 can change the life of a young entrepreneur. 250,000 just to get an extra, pay for an extra room or to buy that extra sewing machine so they can, you know, serve more customers. It makes a difference. And, you know, every little thing counts. So for me, I'm just, I find that I, I started this all because I wanted to just expand the cost of my business, but I am being sucked into something that is much more than that. And it's something that I can see that I really want to take to as, uh, as high a level as I can to encourage and, uh, and uh, help entrepreneurs. We first of all to say a huge thank you. Thank you for the support of women and thank you for the support of entrepreneurs. And uh, we want to say that as you see us making sure that each edition is bigger and better, we want you to stay with us so that we can together scale up and really help the entrepreneurs in this country. BOI's foray into the fashion industry through a dedicated fund was in order to exploit the enormous opportunities that the industry has to create jobs and generally grow the stature of the Nigerian fashion industry. Aside supporting special events like the Fashion Souk, the Bank of Industry has a number of dedicated funds even targeted specifically at women, fashion designers and players in the entertainment industry. Now, Contact the Bank of Industry today to know how you can benefit. Visit their website at boi.ng or call at any of their branches closest to you. And remember, you can apply for BOI loans online. Just download the BOI SME loan app from the Google Play Store and simply follow the instructions. For further information, feel free to tweet at KAY Alayonde. Our previous editions of the program are available on YouTube. And simply type BOI Weekly in the search area and there you go. Well, that will be our package for today. Many thanks for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. Bye for now.